Okay, everyone, it is great to be back. Baruch Hashem. I hope everyone had a beautiful Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah, etc. And now we're back with five minutes of tefillah every day. So I'm going to be a, a, do a drop of a summary of the last detail we spoke about, just so that we can continue. We're in the middle of Kriya, which is a type of tefillah means calling out to Hashem, which means that when we understand precisely who we're talking to, the incredible entity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we understand that on the deepest level, that He is the Kol Yachol, the Baal Rachamim, He could do everything. That itself allows us to talk the most directly, direct form to Him. And the last thing we spoke about was the shortest tefillah. We spoke about the Gemara in Brachis that said that someone came, davened and he davened too long. And then someone else davened and he davened too short. And he said, Kama Katsran, who's there, how short is this person davening? And they said, What do you mean? What about Moshe Rabbeinu? Who davened Kel, Na, Rafa, Na, Allah. And from here, Rosh Hashim is explained how in a few words one could accomplish the most incredible things in the world. And he explained that when we understand that tefillah is a form of kriya, of calling out, when we have that complete realization, that ultimate feeling that Hashem is right here, the entity that could do everything is right in front of me, and I am talking directly to Him, then, with a few words, I could do everything. And the, he explained this utilizing the words from Kaddish of... Um, I'll say the translation is bekashti, which is which means that you can either dive in as a bow and arrow or you can dive in as a sword. If it's a bow and arrow, then it requires much more precision. Whereas if you're killing someone with a sword, it doesn't really make a difference where you hit him. You have a massive sword, you just swipe at him. So when we have a tefillah from close combat, that's a cherev. And then with a few short words, we could do everything. Whereas, if we were to be davening with that bow and arrow, that's the longer tefillahs. Then it requires sometimes much more. But the obvious question when you think about this is, one second. So if with a few short words, I could change the world, I could get whatever I need, Hashem hears me, He's right in front of me. So one second. So why do we need to have lengthy tefillahs? What's the purpose? And maybe we could ask in the current events, every day we're sitting there saying, two kapit lach tilim, three parakim of tilim. One second. We should all stop after davening. Everyone should pause and say, shir hamalais mimamakim kersich Hashem. Finished. And then we should say, achinu kol beis Yisrael, and we should leave shul. What are we doing? It sounds almost funny. When we really realize the power of every word of tefillah, we start to wonder, so why would we ever dive in more? And the answer to this question, Rishim Shempinkis, really brings out how incredible our tefillahs are. And he explains to us as follows. He says, what happened, and just listen to the analogy, and it will give us a complete newfound appreciation for every word of tefillah. He says, V'daymet tefillah bazeh mamish l'tayra. It's exactly like Tyra. The Gemara and Shabbos teaches us that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu spoke to Klal Yisrael, that one and only time during Matan Tyra, Hashem said on the two first Dibrais, what happened? That every word, whatever that means, that left Hashem's Kaviachul mouth was Nismali Kol Ha'ilam Kulay Bashamayim. When Hashem said, Anoichi Hashem Alikecha, the entire world and every dot of the world was filled with those words of Anoichi Hashem Alikecha. So now, one second. If the whole world is filled with every word from Hashem, what does it mean that Hashem said, the second Dibra to us, the second of the Aseris of Dibrais? The whole world's already filled. Explains the Shem Shem Pinkus. No, you know what Hashem did? That after we heard the first Dibra, we were Nifter. And then Hashem revived us and allowed every word to refill up the whole world. So what are we seeing? Says the Shem Shem Pinkus, yes. Every word of tefillah is the most incredible power, the utmost potency. And yes, theoretically we could just say, But you know what else we could do? We could then say it again. 
Because each time we say it, we fill the whole world with tefillah. Each time we say it, it could change the whole world. So what's even better? Then do it again and again and again. And thereby, b'siyat d'shmaya, just like the Dibrais filled the world again, revived us again, so too will our tefillahs be able to do the same. Chavra, great to be back. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you all tomorrow.